My lab is interested in the structural biology of RNA polymerase 1 and 3 transcription. And just to get you into the just to get you into the picture, so you all know RNA polymerase 2, and that's important for um, transcribing DNA into messenger RNA, and then it gets translated into uh, proteins by the ribosome. But in addition, as you know, in eukaryotes, there are two additional RNA polymerases, RNA polymerase 1 and RNA polymerase 3. And RNA polymerase 1 makes the ribosomal RNA, which is then built into the ribosome, and RNA polymerase 3 is specialized to make short transcripts like tRNA, but also 5S RNA or 7SL RNA. And if you wish, the two RNA polymerases have almost opposing activities. RNA polymerase 1 makes these long transcripts, so it requires high processivity, whereas RNA polymerase 3 makes tRNA short transcripts, and it needs many copies of that, so it has to produce very quickly lots of copies, and it does that through a process which is called uh, facilitated reinitiation, one of the things we don't yet really understand very well. Just also to make this clear, this uh, activity of RNA polymerase 1 and 3 is very important in the cell. For a growing cell, about 80% of the total transcriptional activity is actually spent to make this ribosomal RNA and the tRNA. And because it is so active in transcribing, misregulation uh, of RNA polymerase 1 and 3 has been associated with different cancers. And many of oncogenes or, or tumor suppressors actually converge on the RNA polymerase 1 and 3 transcription machinery. So I just want to give you a, a short insight what we have been doing supported by the ERC grant and what has been for me one of the most striking uh, uh, events somehow. So already at the start when we started out working uh, on the ERC grant we managed to solve the crystal structure of RNA polymerase 1 by X-ray crystallography. For that, you have to obviously crystallize RNA polymerase 1 and then you use synchrotron radiation. This is synchrotron in Grenoble, which is still one of the best situated synchrotrons I find. <laughs> and th that happened shortly before we started uh, working on the ERC grant. But in the last years, it turned out that cryo EM has become an extremely powerful technique and that you can now also solve structures at a similar resolution in detail by cryo-electron microscopy, and that was for myself really a uh, revelation that you can do this kind of work, and so we managed to solve the structure of, the, of RNA polymerase 3 by cryo-EM, and this is uh, a project which we had pursued for many, many years trying to crystallize it, and now having solved it, we understand that here are these additional subunits which make this, this enzyme very flexible, and that was probably one of the reasons that we, we couldn't crystallize it. And just this is to illustrate that you see this is an alpha helix, and you can see side chain densities as you would see it in a crystal, crystallographic structure. All this is possible through very important and big, and I must say, expensive microscopes. So, uh, where do we go from now? So, we want to understand how RNA polymerase 1 and 3 are recruited to, the, to their transcription start site. This happens through so-called pre-initiation complexes. These are multi-protein complexes which tell the RNA polymerase to go to its transcription start site. And pole 1 and pole 3 have their very specific set of, of factors which are required for that. And for the moment we are focusing on this aspect, and on this sub-complex if you wish. And there we obtain first results. So again, you see this, this is this part. This is the RNA polymerase by itself, and these are these additional general transcription factors which are required for the transcription. And so these are, these are very first results. But you can see also that these are so complex assemblies with so many uh, subunits that it would have been possibly impossible to crystallize it. But thanks to cryo-EM and the new technological development, you can study them now. So that's all I wanted to say. I want to say happy birthday to, to the ERC, and this is my group, and I should say that about half of the group is actually supported by the ERC, so it is really a, a very critical support mechanism for us, and I'm extremely grateful for having that.